It's your boy Tony, Tony, Tone coming back at y'all, man, one more again with another great video, YouTube, YouTube. Y'all know what time it is, man. We out here in the garage. And guess what? Ain't nothing nobody can do about it, baby. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube. <coughs> Got some uh not bad news. But you know, a little disappointing. But you know, everything happened for a reason though, you know. Uh, as you all know, we figured out what was wrong with the uh, the drivetrain on the 72 Impala. Let me show y'all the Impala real quick. For those of y'all who have not seen it yet, here is the 72 convertible Impala. Yeah, yeah. All nice and neat. I got the back seat. The back seat is right there. But uh, here's the uh, fuel injected LS3. 6.2 liter. Uh, it's a monster, man. It's a beast. It runs like a man. It runs like a monster. You too. You too. Uh, I ain't gonna crank it up today. Well, I might crank it up a little later on. Not right now though. Uh, but yeah, man. Back to what I was saying. Uh, the drive shaft, man, is busted. Uh, this little piece right here connects to the differential on the end and I kind of already separated it as y'all can see I took the old U-joints off disconnect here like this but I tried to replace the U-joints and the U-joints uh, they got little clips that go on the inside right here and what happened is when I put the new U-joint on only one of these clips fit on the inside. It's not room enough for the cap to go all the way in to get the other clip on the inside. If you look closely at this little plastic thing right here, that's where the factory injected these with um, plastic. Here's the plastic that it injected it with. As y'all can see right here, if you look right here on this one, this is plastic right here, that orange stuff in the middle. That's plastic. And that's what held these caps in. It, 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 the plastic filled in there and it held the cap in place. And so pretty much to make a long story short, this is how the, the factory held these bearings in the drive shaft so that they don't slip out. It's with this plastic. And so they didn't make these uh, drive shafts on the 71 and 72 uh, full size Impala and Caprices. They didn't make the drive shafts rebuildable. So when it busted, it busted. You had to go and get a whole new drive shaft. You couldn't just get the U joints and <coughs> pop the old ones out and pop the new ones in. You can't do that with this drive shaft because this drive shaft is not machined for these clips right here to fit on both both sides. So uh, what that tells me, you look here, this one right here, uh, this one don't even have no clips on the inside. I guess, uh, look here, it has only one clip. No, nah, this, this side don't even have no clips. It don't got no clips on this side either. So it looks like this stuff has been replaced, but whoever replaced it, they didn't use the clips. So that's probably why this thing is all beat up and banged up. Even down in here, this thing had a spring down in there and you got this little broken piece right here. Broken piece looks like it went right here. Well, somewhere right up in there, yeah. Uh, right there, like there, some. 
But this broken piece, this broken piece was down in there when I took that off. But anyway, uh, this thing right here connects to the differential with these four bolts. One, two, three, four. So basically, I gotta get a whole new one of these. Gotta get a new, some new ears. Some ears did our machine to accept this on both sides. I gotta get new ears here. And I gotta get a new one of these things right here. So basically, gotta cut this off and weld a new one on. Cut this off and weld a new one on. And I don't have all of those tools and machines and everything that I need. I don't got saws that'll cut this. I don't have a dry shaft balancing machine. I don't have a welder. I don't have any of that. That's thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment. Uh, I, you know, I, I was brought up, man. I was raised. What's up, Mr. Jimmy? But the way I was raised, never pay nobody nothing. Never pay nobody for nothing that you can fix yourself. And, you know, coming up, I had box Chevys. Uh, you know, I fixed a lot of different universal joints on a lot of different 80s models, B bodies, uh, G bodies, Buicks, Regals, stuff like that. And I, I never had this issue before. So as a rule of thumb, anybody out there that has a 71, 72 uh, Impala Caprice, just know that these drive shafts are not rebuildable. So if you have an issue with the drive shafts, you're gonna pretty much have to get a newer drive shaft the same length or pretty much get this one rebuilt. And so that's what we stand at right now. Cause we gotta get new ears that'll fit a universal joint in, that'll accept both clips that hold these caps in on that side. And we gotta get new ears over here to hold both clips in on this side. And we gotta get a whole new piece. So, uh, I don't have that kind of money right now. I'm gonna put my money to the side, you know. And, uh, you know, in a couple weeks, week or two, you know, uh, I'm gonna take it to the shop, YouTube. So, uh, we will be going to the shop. Y'all will be going with me. And, you know, we're gonna get this thing right. And, you know, my dad told me, and Mr. David told me, he said, you know what? As much power as you got behind that, in that engine, you know, you, you, you need to take the drive shaft to the shop and you know, that way they can balance it and everything is, is all good. Because, you know, with all that power in the drive train, you want stuff to be balanced. You want it to be level. You don't want no more issues. You don't want to, <coughs> Spend no time putting you joints in the drive shaft and you put it in, boom, and it pops. Because you got too much power behind it and it's unbalanced. So that's what we're going to do, YouTube. But in the meantime, you know, I have a few other things that, you know, I need to be doing. And so I'm just going to walk over them with you, man. What we're going to be doing is prepping this thing to be road ready. We got a couple of things. First thing that I got to do, let me show y'all. None of my tail lights work. I got this cover here for this side, but I don't have a cover for this side. <coughs> but any of my tail lights don't come on. So I think that every last single one of my bulbs are busted. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be testing the sockets to make sure that I got fire to the sockets. And also testing the bulbs to make sure that, you know, the bulbs are not good. Maybe it just got a little corrosion on them or something like that. 
you know. Uh, or maybe it's a fuse or something that needs to be changed or something like that. So we're going to be looking at the brake lights. Uh, that's one thing that we're going to be looking at. Another thing that we're going to be looking at is, as y'all can see, one of my gas lines is hanging down. Whenever I kept, had to redo my fuel lines because they was leaking, I had to cut the, I had to cut the uh, stainless steel zip ties. And we're going to be securing, re-securing this fuel line so that uh, we don't have any problems. We don't have any, uh, you know, accidents or anything like that. So that's another thing that we'll be doing, re-securing the fuel line. So we got a couple other things that we could be doing. You know, while we waiting on that cash flow to build back up, <coughs> to go and get that drive shaft. But as soon as we get that drive shaft, uh, pretty much the last thing that we got to do, you know, is put the uh, power steering lines on. As y'all can see right here, I don't got the power steering lines connected. I got my power steering reservoir mounted right here. And here's the power steering gearbox here. So we're going to be plumbing the uh, power steering system. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video on how to make the AN6 lines. So uh, we're going to be doing all that together, YouTube. So those are just a couple of things that are coming up in the very, very near future. Uh, pretty much uh, that's about all we got for right now. You know, uh, just little by little, you know, taking your time, you know, doing things right, double checking things, triple checking things, making sure everything is good to go, man. You know, patience is the virtue. Patience is the, is the key. And, you know, that's one thing that we got to have is patience. And, you know, I'm building this car for dependability and you know, stability. I wanna be able to drive across the country in it. And so, you know, uh, I can't just be throwing nothing together, man. Nah, we ain't doing that, man. You know, I was a little disappointed when I found out that I couldn't do the drive shaft, that I couldn't do the U-joints myself, man. I'm so used to doing the U-joints myself. You know, not paying nobody to do nothing that I know how to do but the drive shaft is not rebuildable. And so ain't nothing I could do about it. So just keep that in mind, YouTube. Uh, I know we, we want to shoot to do things ourselves, but sometimes uh, we just don't have the equipment. You know, the equipment might cost thousands of dollars like it does in this case like the, the type of saw you need, like the, the welder that you need, like the balancing machine. And you know what, we, we're not running no drive shaft shop. And so sometimes you gotta break down and, and, and take whatever it is you're working on to the shop. <coughs> Make sure you take it to a reputable shop. You know, um, Try to check the references. Somebody that had work did there before. Look online to see what the uh, internet has to say about them. Check the Better Business Bureau to make sure you know you ain't you ain't you ain't burning your money. You you want to get some good service from whoever you uh, whoever you decide to deal with, man. But first and foremost, you know, hey, just just pray about it first, man. Ask the Lord to guide you and direct you to where you need to do business at, you know, because it may be another opportunity that opens up for you just because of that. So, you know, I ain't upset. I'm not mad. I'm going to praise God for my situation, you know, because things are coming along. I've come this this far, you know, so I'm going to keep on coming. I'm going to keep coming, you two. You two! Y'all know what time it is, man. But uh, pretty much that's it. That's all I got for the day. So uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get this view line tightened up, and uh, we'll be back with y'all, man. We'll show y'all what we do, YouTube. All right, be back in a minute. 
YouTube, I'm back, man. Um, had to run up to the auto parts store real quick while I was underneath the car. Um, tightening up the, putting the uh, stainless steel gas lines on. I noticed a bolt on the Y pipe. It was off. And I sure check out what I'm talking about. Cut the light on. <laughs> this bolt right here was off. And so, actually this bolt was off right here. And so, I just took this bolt off to take it to the parts store to match it up. Uh, I actually ended up having to go to the auto, the hardware store to get the right bolt. Uh, and I remembered I didn't tighten up this one all the way. And I've been running the engine, so I guess the vibration made that guy come off and it fell off somewhere, probably in the street or at the exhaust shop or probably fell off somewhere in the garage. So uh, I went ahead. So uh, as you can see here, when I was down here doing the fuel line, they go the fuel line right here. I put these stainless steel zip ties on it. I noticed one of these uh, bolts right here had vib this bolt right here had vibrated off. And then I thought about it. I said, I don't remember tightening that one up all the way. I said I was gonna go back and tighten it up, but I didn't. So I took this one off, took it to the parts store to try to match them up. And they didn't have the bolt at the parts store, so I had to go to the hardware store. But while I'm down here, let me show you the stainless steel fuel line. So this is right before it goes up into the engine compartment here. It comes down. I got another stainless steel zip tie tied to the old gas line. And as you can see, it's tucked on. Tucked all the way up in there, YouTube. All the way down there. I got stainless steel zip ties all the way down. So it's all the way up in there. I ain't got to worry about it hanging and getting caught on that, YouTube. So uh, let me show you this. While I was at the uh, parts store, I went ahead and picked up one of these as a, a flasher for the signal lights. And uh, I got my gas cap here. This is a gas cap. This is the kind that uh, the vents, has the vent tube and if pressure builds up in the tank, it'll release the pressure. So let's see if it fits on. Uh, never had the uh, never had the uh, gas tank yet. That's it. Uh, YouTube. Check it out. Check it out. And there y'all see I got those uh, Y pipe bolts tightened up. And so I just do, I'm gonna double check the other side while I'm at it. Make sure that side is tight too. So we don't want no problems, you too, you too. All right, so we got the gas line done. We got the Y pipes tighten up. And uh, yeah, I tested the brake lights already too. So we're not getting no fire back there. So we gotta figure out what's going on. So we gotta figure out what's wrong with the brake in the tail light, YouTube. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, YouTube, YouTube. Final thing we did for the day is I got the uh, fuel pump wire running from the front. And I got it running all the way back here. Uh, let me cut the light on. Uh, that's gonna be all for the day, YouTube, YouTube. Hey, I appreciate y'all for watching. Uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel, Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and also, uh, if you need to sign into your Gmail, go ahead and sign into your Gmail so that you can subscribe. Uh, also, click that bell and turn on your notification button. That way, and uh, hit all. That way you can see the new videos that uh, I post. And you get an alert. Uh, I appreciate it. Y'all take care. 
And uh, y'all have a blessed day. You too, you too.